what's up everybody hey happy saturday it's another another wonderful saturday that i get to live stream and talk to you about growing product brands selling amazing products and i wanted to share something it all of these things i share because they kind of bug me i see what other people are doing what people are prescribing uh entrepreneurs are you're just trying to launch a product you're trying to grow a product brand and we want to turn everything into some NASA experiment to find the God particle when in reality, we need to just do very simple things and focus on our business, focus on making an amazing business versus creating an amazing marketing contraction or whatever. So what I wanted to talk today about is just pulling back the curtain, showing you some very very simple things focus what i think you should focus on how to build your own system around content and about relationships that will help you build an audience and then you can launch products to that audience over and over again and uh yeah let's just let's just dive right in here and we'll keep it super simple so for a lot of you you're in my facebook group you're in geometric scale for product brands uh, if not, and you still use Facebook, which every day is a debate, right? <laughs> Should I stay on Facebook or not? If you're still using Facebook, check it out. I have a free group. We do these lives every week, and I give everybody access to my vault, which has similar trainings from past weeks. So you don't have to say, oh, I'm going to show up at 2 p.m. Eastern every single Saturday. I know you have families. I know you have businesses to run. I know you have side hustles to do. You've got stuff to do. So I save these, I record them, and I put up online for everybody. So that being said, let me share my screen and we'll hop right in here. But I do want you to, uh, I mean, eventually, hey, join that Facebook group or listen to the podcast because I share a lot of great information there. Um, but let's hop in. So I made this simple Canva presentation it's for you guys. Let's talk about this. It's like, let's 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 dive in okay simple product marketing system for real businesses i want you to run a real business not a fake business not some weird ad arbitrage system but let's go through some myths These are things that people think i hear even thought leaders people that are you know in the pantheon of these are the cool people i hear them say all the time it's like oh you got to grind it out you got to work more effort Ew, more effort on the wrong thing it's just going to get you more junk it's not going to build a business. Hours and effort do not correlate to revenue, right? Ditch diggers would be millionaires, billionaires. And I have met people that started out as ditch diggers that are very, very successful, but it's not because they dug a ditch faster. It's because they learned these extra skills. They learned how to build systems, hire people, lead people, do things that didn't involve digging ditches. And this is why I think that making complex marketing systems don't work or sending and focusing on a bunch of social media doesn't work. Myth two, everybody runs ads. Hey, everybody's got to run Facebook ads or YouTube ads or TikTok ads. And like, that's the thing. That's how I'm going to get attention. The biggest companies on earth and the biggest deals that I've ever done didn't involve any, any paid advertising. It requires relationships. There's massive companies. If you've ever looked at the Fortune 100 or Fortune 500 or even the biggest companies who aren't even listed because they don't care about Fortune 100 or fortune 500 status because again that's kind of it's kind of like an advertisement they don't run ads you've probably never heard of those companies they don't care if you know about them they do business their own way uh, through business development and being known by the right people uh, myth three complexity and magic this is that one funnel away or one email sequence away one ad hack away from making all the money you're going to unlock some type of reality there are literally no secrets uh there's just distractions so there's lots of shiny balls out there and people jump from shiny ball to shiny ball thinking that there is some other secret routine some magic words alakazam that's going to turn their poor product and um, incomplete business skills into the next big thing all of these techniques that people sell the reason they're complex is because that is their job. Their job is to build these systems and manage them for you. And all of those systems are, when run correctly, 
their ability to grow or scale your business. All you're going to do is take what you've got and you're going to multiply it, hopefully. <laughs> so if you have something that that's not so great, you're just going to multiply failure. You're not going to multiply success. So uh, if you've jumped in and said, like, how do I sell my product? Like, how do I do content marketing, for example? How do I get people to track my audience? I got to build my audience, right, Kelly? I got I to gotta be famous. I got to have a bunch of followers, a bunch of people on my list, all that stuff. Okay, if you want. If not, you can talk about different ways, but you've probably seen graphs that look like this, all these things, these customer journeys. Uh, understanding what your customer wants, where they are in their life is, is helpful. Uh, all these things are built by professional marketers. And uh, I've met some great marketing people, fantastic marketing people, really at the high end of the market. Uh, they do like the data, they do the massive creative, that piece. Uh, I can't hire them. You probably can't hire them if you're listening to this, you're watching this. Um, but I will tell you that almost everybody that I've met with a marketing degree it's terrible at marketing. They're great at making these kind of charts. Fantastic. They, they crush it. Um, everyone that I know that's actually good at marketing, they launch a product and they market for their own company. Ezra Firestone, great example of that. He's, I think he's a great marketer. He has a cosmetics company. <laughs> they end up realizing you can make more money selling products than running a marketing agency. They all, they all uh, end up actually creating products. You can see Gary Vee has products, right? It's the reason why. If you're not confused by that other stuff, you'll be confused by this, these crazy funnels that people make. So complicated. Um, yeah, I mean, these work can work just fine. But again, like this is a just, you're adding complexity and it's harder to fix. It's harder to implement. It's harder to learn how it works. It's, uh, you have to pay somebody for it. You have to pay somebody to manage it. If you're not at that level and you're just looking at launching and, and scaling, if you're this is kind of uh, it's kind of crazy, but you see a lot of these too. It's like, yeah, this is the ultimate sales funnel. This is the e-commerce funnel. This is the relationship funnel. I'll show you that this is not a good sales funnel. This is not an, how e-commerce ecosystem works, and this is not how you build relationships at all. This is how a psychopath thinks of the, about this stuff, and uh, this is not built on experience. Again, this is just built on some kind of. Uh, marketing 101 or 201 understanding of how business works. So here's the thing. We're just going to simplify everything. We're going to take that, simplify it way, way, way down because complex systems are expensive. Like I said, they're very difficult to improve. Uh, we can go deep into process design and business process automation and continual improvement and all those fun things that come from my industry, come from manufacturing industry and then are implemented across businesses. But we can also just take it in a really simple approach because most likely you're not there and we don't need to talk about KPIs and really in-depth metrics and how to pull that information. We just need to understand like, what the hell are we doing, man? Like, what's the, what's the basis? Let's build a foundation uh, of basic understanding and then let's move forward. So let's simplify everything to the, the bare, bare bones. What are we actually doing? Well, if you're trying to launch a product, you only need to do two things, two activities. All you have to do is find a way to attract people and then a way to nurture people. That's it. You can think of this as a way to get attention and a way to keep attention. As you evolve and you turn a product into a business, that's my whole thing, transform a product into a product business, you'll need a third, third thing, a way to continue to support people, to nurture them. At every single one of these stages, we can make sales. At every single one of these stages, we can get referrals, word of mouth or promoter. You know, we can track those things. But traditionally, you'd see this funnel and you people would say, OK, there's a percentage here. And then at the end, there's a percentage of post this out or sales or whatever. I'm going to flatten that whole thing. OK, you're just getting attention and you're nurturing the attention. At any point, those people could become customers. And at any point, those people could share something out. But when we really break down all those funnels, like we saw, this is a pretty simple thing that you'll see. Is this is a typical, this is what people, they'll fluff it up. They'll make this really complicated looking. Maybe they'll throw in an email sequence. 
you know, they'll say, hey, you know, use this, use this. Hey, have you seen this new Clavio, this and that and that? Have you seen this Shopify plugin? But it, we boil it down to, they want you to run ads. They want to manage it and charge you every single month. Drive it to a sales page, landing page, product store of some kind. They want people to buy it. And uh, if they're really with it, they'll have a upsell, they'll have a bundle, or they have some additional way to make money. The problem is, is that running these Facebook ads, people are going for a lower impulse buy. They don't know your brand. So they have to be really looking for it and it can't be too expensive. The problem is, is acquiring customers through Facebook is expensive. And uh, if we run the numbers for this, I actually end up making very little money until somebody can rebuy or I can upsell them. So this is what a lot of people that you will see as digital marketers will try to tell you, hey, let's run uh, Facebook ads. I don't care. You can replace this with TikTok, YouTube or whatever. And they'll be like, hey, I have this customer that was super successful doing this. Generally, you dive in and it's because that customer did something other than this. This is what every single person, every drop shipping teenager, this is what every affiliate marketer, this is what every private label company, this is what they're trying to do. You're competing literally with the reddest of red oceans. And this is why most e-commerce businesses make no money because they're all doing these crazy things. So uh, instead of just going quick for the sale like that, let's talk about breaking this into attract and nurture. And, you know, you look at this and say, okay, well, I need some way of bringing people in and then like, hey, they're not going to impulse buy. So I want to keep them around for a little while. I want to talk to them. If you're a part of a Facebook group, maybe this is like, uh, you know, you're like, hey, is Callie doing this to me? I absolutely am. I want to keep giving you information and helping you until you're so successful that you tell somebody else, hey, you got to join this Facebook group or you got to listen to this podcast or, hey, this guy could help you. Uh, you might never, ever be my customer, but you might just be somebody that's in the community that I can help. And you might know somebody that's my customer. This is how reality works. This is how human beings work. And this is how relationships work. So you want to bring people in to your universe and you want to nurture them. So let me share with you a very simple strategy for this. I don't think the strategy works fantastically well anymore anyways, but there's people that have built and I have built six figure, seven figure brands on the back of this. It's just that Facebook's really tricky right now. I don't know what, why they want to sink their company so badly, but uh, right with this strategy, we would get attention on Facebook. We could do that through paid marketing, bring people into a landing page where they could reserve the product and show you some examples of this. But then really what we're trying to do is bring people into an email list that we continue to nurture them. We bring them into a VIP group or a, a little Facebook group. And this, this group, I name it something that is with the affinity or what we're what these people are trying to become, right? And this starts to infer customer intelligence. Like we know who our competitors are, who our customer avatar is. And we've talked about this in past weeks, but at this point, now we can start creating a community where people can visit and learn from us. Back in the day, because I'm an old person, we used to do this in forums. We'd build forums and people would exchange information and we, we would uh, learn from each other very active communities of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. And it was, a, it was a great way, if you were a moderator of those, we had uh, chat groups through IRC, very similar. And now you have Discord communities, you have Slack communities, lots of other things other than Facebook. But look, this is the idea is that we're getting some attention, it could be from paid, it could be from uh, some other means that we're gonna talk about in a second, but people are going, they're seeing what your offer is oh, this person has this really cool product. Hey, it's not out yet, but I can reserve it. I can sign up for this email list. Hey, this thing's going to sell out. Be the first, hey, you know, be part of the testing cohort, be part of the you know, inside community that's the, gets the first crack at this thing. Uh, you could also say, hey, that it's discounted. I hate giving discounts. That's a whole other topic. I think that that is just a total cop out. And if you are working with a marketing agency and they want you to run sales or run things like that, um, go find somebody new, find somebody who can actually 
figure out how to improve your business, not how to cut your throat. But um, we get people into a group, some kind of list and some kind of group where we can start communicating, they can start sharing out content. And for me, that content looks like this. Hey, there we go. I have my podcast, I have an email list, I have this Facebook group. I have a couple different ways that I build community and I cross pollinate them. But this is super simple. We just make a place for people to live and we continue to uh, work that community. So what I want you to do is I want you to take all those ideas that you have and instead of thinking of it as stripping it away or throwing things away, I want you to evolve simplicity. I want you to look at what you're doing or what you've seen other people do. And I want you to evolve simplicity, see what works and only take what works. We need qualified traffic of potential customers who trust our brand. So this is a little tangent here. Something that I always say, people do not buy from people they know, like, and trust. That is crazy. It is a lie that's told every day through thought leaders and influencers. It's not the case at all. People buy because of people they know, like, and trust. So if somebody that you really respect says, hey, Kelly is fantastic. You should get onto this live stream. You're going to learn a ton. You will do it. You don't necessarily even know who I am. You're just going to do it. And that is how things work. Uh, that's why influencer marketing works. That's why that's why commercials with celebrities and sports stars work. Not because people really, really love whatever product it is, it's because they pay attention enough to take action and then listen to the message. So trust the brand or the brand that brings it to them. Uh, we need to do this systematically. We don't want to pay money. We don't want to live on social media. We don't want to waste a bunch of time. We have stuff to do. So Let's talk about channel strategy really quickly, and then we're going to jump into maybe the most simple marketing system you've ever seen. But look, uh, if you know channel strategy, that's like all the different places, and people say, "Oh, be omnipresent." You know, you gotta you gotta be on Instagram, you gotta be on TikTok, you gotta be on this, you gotta do email, you gotta do this, and you do this and do this. Um, yeah, that's great. But like, if you're trying to launch a product, you're probably in engineering or design. You're working with manufacturers. You're building out a team. You've got a lot of, on your plate. So uh, I recommend looking at what the minimal effective dose is, building something that works, and you can add and manage complexity later. But um, you only really need three channels. So if you, if you look at all the different channel strategy, is you need something where you're building that community. You need something where you're building your authority, your brand or your personal brand. And you need something which will allow you to reach out to partners. And this is really important. If you follow my content and my strategy, you know that I use collaborative partnerships, so joint ventures, strategic brand partnerships, things like that to bring in massive growth without spending a lot of money on ads. This is what I do in my other businesses. I do business development. Uh, I'm not a salesperson, I'm not a marketer. I sell a lot of stuff and I do it because I partner with a company that already has my customers. I provide value for them they present my product to their customers and then I make sales. It's super simple, but to do that, I have to have credibility, which means I have to have some type of authority in that space. And generally that looks like I already have customers or I already have a community. So how do we actually set this up? Well, first you gotta cut the fluff, stop wasting all your energy. And I'm gonna make this super simple. Okay. so. If you look at here's our little here's our three setup right here You've got fun little icon for a community you've got fun little icon for our home base our authority right this is where our content is going to live forever this is where we can keep doling it out this is where if uh, potential partners look at us they're like wow hey kelly's got a hundred episodes of the podcast that's awesome he's been around for a little while oh He's got a little community that he started. Oh, he's developed hundreds of products. Oh, this person's maybe is somebody that I should speak to. But he, here, I'm going to make this really, really simple. So what I want is you to have a home base. And this could be your own Facebook group if you love Facebook. It could be your podcast. It could be a YouTube channel. I have a podcast. Okay. 
And a lot of my clients have podcasts. And the reason is, is because I think that almost anybody says yes to being on a podcast. And it's a really great way to build your network because I can reach out to a partner and say, hey, why don't you appear on my podcast? I can create a piece of content with them and then I can feed it to my community. This builds my authority in the community and then they share it out. These partners will share it out. And I have a whole strategy on this and we'll end the presentation with the link, link to that. And I put out a couple hours of content explaining how to do collaborative growth strategies that, that are content first. But this is really simple, is that I highlight other people to make myself an authority. And I start, this allows me to start building relationships with these partners. I take, as I develop this, I build a special piece of content for these partners and they share it with their audience, which allows me to leverage their audience and that audience to be my audience. This is how I've done a lot of different things, but it's how I've grown email lists to 10,000 or 20,000 in a few weeks. It's how I get thousands of, thousands of visitors to my websites without any content on, on the site. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, I, I mean, I do a lot of business a year and we don't run ads for most of the businesses. So it's pretty simple. If we looked at the funnel or we looked at this whole system, so I have this laid out, don't let this overwhelm you. It's actually unbelievably simple. Is that we have these different traffic sources. That's my little JV partnership traffic. There's, hey, there's my Facebook group. There's my YouTube channel. I just put these icons. Just It represents whatever you like. But we make a key piece of content. People go there. We have a little offer for them to jump on an email or give me the SMS. So if you've ever gotten a lead magnet from me, it's probably what that is, right? And then I just continually nurture them with content. I spend two hours a week at the most creating content. And that content is pushed to email and it's pushed to uh, partners' emails. And that's it. So uh, I, more and more, I'm getting off of almost every social media channel. I don't, if you're not in one of my groups, it's just, it's a, it's a total waste of time for me. Um, I don't need to be some celebrity or famous. I am just trying to do cool projects with people and uh, trying to make money. So a lot of the stuff that people do, it's, I guess it's like the internet version of posing in front of a Lamborghini or whatever. Um, I don't even want a Lamborghini. <laughs> More of a Porsche 911 guy, but still is what I'm saying is a lot of people are doing irrelevant stuff, but if we're trying to launch a product, it looks like this. I have to build an audience. I have to attract people and everybody's saying buy ads, but there's already somebody out there. There's a brand or a person that has all of your customers. They have a list of 100,000 people on their list. If they were to email, hey, go follow XYZ, you would have 1,000, 10,000 plus people on your email list within minutes or within hours. So if we know that all the biz, biggest businesses on earth are built through partnerships, and we know that there's somebody that already has our audience, it's just like a cruel inevitability that somebody's going to use this strategy. And when you look at all those uh, influential entrepreneur type people, you'll start to discover like, oh my God, they're all doing what Kelly is doing. They're making a key piece of content with a new audience saying the same old things that they say, saying their one niche and one angle strategy. It doesn't matter if they're selling a product or coaching or uh, that they speak on stage or whatever that you see, they are creating content or creating a partnership with a group of people that can promote them over and over. So finding new people and bringing them into their list. That's all that they're doing. They do it over and over and over and over again. But what happens is I do this, I build up my list and I can push that to a product launch. I can keep launching products every, every month if I wanted to, and people will buy them. But what's even better is as I build those relationships, those JV partnerships, they can co-launch or they can bundle they can push people and see even at this tiny little percentage this person has fifty thousand email lists which i can tell you is not that many emails even at this tiny percentage this is all pre-qualified 
because this, you know that this person is in alignment with you or this brand is in alignment with what you stand for and what, what types of customers that you have. So when they say yes, people see this product, they're hyped up because somebody they've trusted said, here it is, and we have a great conversion rate. Um, so at, at this stage, and I can run through the numbers, I could do that later if, you, if you're interested, but this system works. I don't need to run ads at all to make product launches work. I can figure this out and then I can run ads to here. I can run ads to here. I'm generally running ads to build up this list to reach new audiences or test new messages. But in general, this will grow your list very quickly. This will grow your sales very quickly. It allow you to enter and launch new products and it costs nothing and it builds over time you're building equity because you're building your content where it lives forever you're distributing it on other platforms um yeah and you're able to nurture over time so really all that we're doing is creating a piece of content in this to get attention and then we're putting it to our community and to our list to nurture them forever so I built a whole step-by-step -step process for how to do this uh, called the Collaborative Growth Blueprint. If you go to episode 86 of the End Hype podcast, I walk through this entire thing, but I want you to make a list of five people. I want you to take daily action to engage them. I want you to get them to know you by actually supporting them. I want you to create a piece of content with them. And I want you to start involving yourself with their audience. This goes in how to actually build and launch products with them. But really what we covered today is just to hear, maybe to hear. And uh, you can do six figure launches with just a piece of this uh, piece of this puzzle. So if you're, uh, if you're curious, this is a piece of software, super buggy, but it's really interesting. So Check this out. So this is like uh, your standard kind of funnel, what people tell you to do. They put a bunch of extra stuff around it, but this is this is pretty, pretty basic. So I run Facebook ads. Let's say that I, I want 2,500 visitors. A $1 pay-per-click is like amazing, amazing. Okay, you're like, that's phenomenal. That's not gonna happen. It's gonna be about $52, but let's just pretend like you're really great and that you can get 2,500 people to click for a dollar. Um, your email list, let's say 100 people click through, you've got 3% click through rate. That means that you have a sizable but growing list, right? Let's say that you get 100 people to click on your site every time you shoot off an email. So what this means is, hey, that means I have 2,600 people see this, Generally on a sales page on cold traffic like this, your 5% conversion is pretty good. That's solid. This is solid numbers. Let's pretend like your cart drops 80%, which I'm telling you is that's not even realistic. This is high. That's amazing. What are we going to make? Look at this number. You're going to make $1,800 for the month. Sounds pretty good. I, I don't I, I don't think that you're going to survive on that number, but these are all like very optimistic numbers. As soon as I make these realistic, you see why people fail and why they have to up their cart value. This is even with an upsell. So I said, hey, 10% of people are going to spend $98, not $49. They're going to spend a little bit more money. You can play with this all you want, but I can tell you right now, these I can up this to $200, you'd still lose money. I'll cut through the VIP group because it's kind of uh, redundant. I don't need to tell you like how much of a pain in the butt that is. But the difference is this, is I can build up a community. I can make these whatever I want them to be. Let's say that um, my authority channel, I get 5,000 clicks through my YouTube. Let's, let's just lower it down. Let's just say only 1,000 people click per month through all my YouTube videos that I've ever created. Great. What else? I got 
only a hundred people are clicking through all my Facebook stuff. I have a thousand e email clicks, my partnership channel. This is where you'd be driving a lot of your traffic. Also doesn't really matter. Let's just make this terrible. But see, I also don't have to pay for any of this. It's all passive. It's just, it just happens, right? So then how many emails am I gonna, I'm gonna create? All right, so like I didn't do a whole lot. I got 300 emails a month uh, just coming in passively. That's great. I didn't run any ads. I didn't really push myself over the limit. These are not unrealistic numbers. If you do a partner with somebody that has a large list and you're getting a thousand out of that out of that um, content push, uh, it's, it's pretty bad. But Look, that's a thousand people that are going to click through, and then we have percentage drops. Only ten percent of them actually sign up, so it's pretty bad. But here's the magic: is that when we actually do these collaborative launches, because we've built so much equity, let's just push this down. Let's just say that they that they only give us ten thousand clicks. They do a campaign with us the whole that whole month or that whole week. They're pushing out across their different channels. And they're pushing us to a product launch page. So bear in mind that that also will grow our email and our SMS list massively. But now I've just made this pathetic level of partnership. And uh, I'm, I'm getting $10,000 a month, but I'm getting it for free. If I took that $10,000 a month and then I put that into here, into ads, and I added that on, I could amplify this whole system because then I'd get more emails, then I'd put more emails into here, or I could get more attention for my partner. I could get more attention for my nurture content, right? I can take this money and I can reinvest and then I can scale with ads. But this system is super simple. I'm just getting a way to get attention. I am capturing that attention, I'm nurturing it month after month, and I'm positioning my brand and my offer. So then these people that I've tested this relationship and built that relationship through content and through support and through dialogue, then I'm, I'm able to turn that into an offer. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did this thing together? And uh, if you're a friend of mine, you know, like I, I put a lot of effort into just a handful of relationships. This is the other key is that people get shiny ball syndrome or they, they look at somebody famous and say, oh, I should do business with X, Y, Z. And they really kind of uh, sociopathically map it out. But in reality, you probably already know the person that could change your life and change your business. And you should be doing business with your, with your peers already. You should be supporting your peers. And you should be mapping out how your brand could really help out somebody that's at that next level of elevation. What can you do with them, for them? How can you support them? And this puts you in a position to understand what partnerships look like. People are difficult to work with, okay? I'm a huge proponent of collaboration, but I am the first person to get frustrated. It's, it just is what it is, okay? We are human beings, we're not perfect. You have to set that aside, but we put ourselves in a position where then when we do collaboration, we can push out our product. And this is how I've gotten into the top tech companies in the world. This is how I've gotten into the top defense contractors in the world. This is how I've partnered with really, uh, in my opinion, world-class artists. Uh, this is how clients of mine have gotten partner partners with really large uh, e-commerce brands or retailing brands or uh, beauty brands, uh, clothing brands, you, you can kind of name this is that we've played this strategy multiple times and we've built up this tier. So then when they do launch, the partners that we're bringing in are bringing in hundreds of thousands of eyeballs or millions of eyeballs to guarantee the product's launch success versus, oh my God, how much money can I afford to lose a bunch of money on ads when will the person repurchase? What's their lifetime value? What's their average you know, order value? All of the, these metrics that are out there about how to squeeze every penny 
at a lower customer acquisition cost and like lower shipping costs and logistics costs, it, when you do something as massively valuable, you can afford simplicity because we can strip a lot of that stuff away. We can leave that to people who are experts in those spaces for them to optimize. Whereas we just need to create a very simple system that is massively profitable or successful, right? Let, let the nine to five people, let the contractors, let the freelancers and consultants come in and optimize things. They're never going to create things for you or it would be very difficult to do so you have to do that you have to figure it out but what are your three channels where is your product going to live forever what are the type of partners that you could bring on to create content on that channel and where where would your community live you know you could choose whatever that you want um lots of people are moving stuff to discord or some of the other kind of chat style uh communities because uh, Facebook's so terrible. We tried Mighty Networks. Very hard to get people off of that Facebook, uh, you know, that that uh, Facebook platform. Very hard to get people to build a community anyplace else. But uh, let's just keep it super simple. What I just showed you, it will strip away a ton of your time, ton of your confusion. You don't need to do everything. You need to find the biggest levers and the big, biggest actions to build realistic businesses. So if you have more questions, you can go to collabproducts.com slash collab, and you can get that blueprint. And there's a little mini training. You can listen to the podcast, uh, episode 86. I like episode 85 really to start, but episode 86 and go through the different steps to really walk you through that. And uh, yeah. That's, that's it. I'll see you in the community. If you're not a member of Geometric Scale, I have a Facebook community. That's kind of where I distribute a lot of the content first. And if you do have questions, you're welcome to DM me. I probably have nothing to sell you. I mean, I work, work with larger brands, but I'm happy to hop on a Zoom, talk you through this, talk you through obstacles that you have in your business. I set aside time every week to talk to one or two people, uh, just, just to meet people and, and really try to build up that community. So uh, if you need to DM me, I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, stick around. Uh, let me know what you need. Thank you. And I'm out of here. <laughs>